Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. For fabric on this one, I'm using this gorgeous wine colored velvet. It has stretch in both directions. Good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my back, my fabric underneath is on the fold, I have a couple of notches at the sleeve and one at the top and bottom of the fold line. So the first thing to do here is to take care of the neck. So for a little bit of extra support I'm adding some stretch tape. So that's that done. And now to finish the neckline I've decided on bias. So I'm using some stretch lining fabric, laying it right sides together with the back neck and stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way around. Now to trim down that seam allowance, taking off about two thirds here, pressing the bias away from the bodice, but making sure that that trim seam allowance in underneath is butted up against it. Ready to understitch. So I've placed my needle through the bias, through the trim seam allowance in underneath, and I'm about a millimetre or two away from the bodice. And now to finish the neckline, I just need to take care of that raw edge. So I'm folding it in underneath, giving myself a little crease line there, folding again and pressing. And this time I'm going to stitch along the inner crease edge, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So I just need to trim down that excess bias tape, give it a press, and this is how it looks. Happy with that? So now this piece is ready to be joined to my front at the shoulder. So on to the front. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have the usual sleeve notch and a notch at the top and bottom of the fold line. I've added that same stretch tape around the neckline. And for finishing here, I've decided to fully line the front bodice. So using the same pattern piece again, I'm cutting out some stretch lining fabric, marking all of the same notches. And laying it right sides together with my front and pinning around the neck stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance. Little pivot there at my corner. And finishing with a back stitch at the other shoulder. I need to do the same thing here as I did on the back neck, so I need to trim down that seam allowance and snip into my corners. And in preparation for understitching, press. stitching here 
ear, through the lining fabric, through that trim seam alliance in underneath, about a millimetre or so away from the bodice, being really careful around my corners, and finishing with a back stitch. So that just needs a good press. And this is the result. Happy with that? So now that that's done, I'm ready to join my front and back together at the shoulder. So laying my back over my front, my fabric is right sides together, making sure that the edge of the back neck is lined up really accurately with the edge of the front, folding that lining fabric over the top and pinning into place. And ready to stitch, back stitching to start, up my 1cm seam alliance and back stitching to finish. So I just need to trim my corner. Once it's had a good press, this is how it looks. Super happy with this. So now that that's done, I want to treat the front lining fabric and bodice fabric as one going forward. So I'm just going to run a tacking stitch the whole way around the perimeter of these two fabrics. I'm stitching within my seam alliance. This will just make sure that nothing shifts when I'm trying to put this little dress together. up the side seams. So laying my back over my front, my fabric is right sides together and ready to stitch. So this time to the overlocker, sewing at my one centimeter seam alliance the whole way down. So that completes the front and back bodice. So now I'm ready for the sleeves. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece and the usual notches around the sleeve head. So the first thing to do here is to run two lines of gathering stitches from the back notch round to the front notch. Using the longest stitch length on my machine, starting with a back stitch and pulling my threads at the end. So that's the first line complete. I've moved my needle a little bit towards the right and stitching the second line. So that's my gathering stitches all in place. So I'm leaving the bottom two threads as they are Holding on to the top two threads and pushing my fabric along. Measuring here to see if I've gathered enough. And once I'm happy, tying off my threads. So now that that's done, I'm ready to close up that underarm seam. Using the overlocker here again, stitching at my one centimeter seam alliance. So now to add those ruffles. I have two layers of ruffles at the bottom of each sleeve, one that will be sewn directly to the bottom of the sleeve and one that will be sewn like an overlay over the top. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch at the top of the fold line and I'm cutting this out four times. So the first thing to do here is to join those short ends together and create somewhat of a tube. So laying one end over the other, right sides together, pinning, and I've repeated that process for all four pieces. So that's that done. And while I was at the overlocker, I've also ran the hem through it. And in 
preparation for stitching, I'm just folding it up by my 1 inch hem allowance and pinning into place and stitching here directly through those overlock stitches finishing with a back stitch so that's my hem all taken care of and now that that's done I'm ready to gather that top edge so just doing exactly the same thing here as I did on the sleeve head. So running those two lines of gathering stitches. I've gathered my fabric down off camera and just measuring here against the bottom of the sleeve to see if I've gathered enough. And once I'm happy I have, snipping my threads, putting my hand through the ruffle piece pulling the sleeve down and matching up my edges, matching up my underarm seams and ready to sew. Stitching at my 1cm seam allowance, back stitching to start and to finish. I'll take care of that raw edge off camera and give this a press. Happy with that. So that completes the first ruffle. So now for the more overlay type one. So back to my little tube again. I've prepared this in exactly the same way as before. So I've taken care of the hem, but this time I want to take care of that top edge also. So I've turned that edge underneath by one inch. And here I'm just running those same gathering stitches as I ran before. So I'm placing the first one right on the edge of those overlock stitches. And for the second, I'm about a centimetre away from the first. And popping my gathers in through this folded fabric is just going to give me a really gorgeous lip to the top of the ruffle. That's one of the main features of this dress, so I want to make sure that it's super neat and tidy. So just finishing my second line here. I'll gather that fabric down off camera and this is the result. So you can see that nice ruffled lip. And to add this one, I'm pulling the sleeve up through the ruffle. I'm making sure that the seam on the under ruffle is matched up between those two lines of gathering stitches and pinning into place. So I've placed my needle right in the centre of those gathering stitches and if I've pinned correctly I should be picking up the seam allowance in underneath of the first ruffle. So taking this nice and gently the whole way around, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's that done and I'm very happy with how this looks. I've got a nice clean top edge. My ruffles are all very evenly gathered down. Love this. So that's my sleeve complete and ready to be joined to my bodice. So lining up the underarm seam. My front and back notches. shoulder notch. I'll pop a few more pins in off camera and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching to finish. I'll run those raw edges through the overlocker and press. So that's my sleeves all attached. I do have one little trick that I'm going to add to the sleeve at the end, so I'll come back to that. But now this piece is ready to be joined to my skirt at the waist. This is my back, my fabric underneath is on the fold, and I have notches at the top and bottom of the fold line. So the first thing to do here is to join this to my front at the side seams. So onto the front, 
Same thing here again, my fabric is on the fold and I have those same notches at the top and bottom of the fold line. Laying my front over my back, right sides together and pinning up those side seams. And stitching here on the overlocker at my 1cm seam allowance. So I've given that a press. So the first thing to do here is to add the ruffle piece to the hem. My fabric underneath is on the fold and I have a notch at the top of the fold line. I'm cutting this piece out twice for front and back. So I want to join my two pieces at the side seams. So laying one over the other, right sides together and pinning, stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance on the overlocker. So I'm going to prepare this piece in exactly the same way as I did the over ruffle on the sleeves earlier. So I've turned my top edge and bottom edge underneath by one inch. I've pinned and stitched that bottom edge into place and the top edge I've ran two lines of gathering stitches. I've gathered all of that fabric down, measured it against the bottom of the skirt Slip my threads and here I'm just pinning the bottom edge of the skirt to the ruffle, matching up my notches, matching up my side seams. And ready to stitch. So just like I did on the sleeve before, I'm placing my needle directly in between those two lines of gathering stitches, picking up the skirt hem in underneath the whole way around. Finishing with a back stitch. So that's my skirt all fully prepped and ready to be added to my bodice at the waist. Happy with that. So laying my bodice over the top, my fabric is right sides together, lining up that centre notch, my side seams and my centre back notch. I'm going to stitch this on the overlocker but when I do I'm going to add some of this clear elastic. This will just allow the fabric to stretch out so I can get this dress on but more importantly allow it to recover back to its original shape. So making sure my needles are going through the elastic, through the bodice and through the skirt. Stitching at my 1cm seam allowance the whole way around. So that's my bodice and skirt joined at the waist and the inspiration for this dress had a huge belt so that's what I'm going to tackle next and the belt type that I'm going to try to create here is an OB style belt. So there are two pattern pieces to this. The first is one that will go across the front waist. My fabric underneath is on the fold, a little notch at the fold line top and bottom and notches at the side for an opening. 
you'll see that later on. And then my side pieces. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, corresponding notches for the opening, and I didn't have enough fabric left to cut these pieces to the length I wanted. So off camera I've just added a little extension to both, which you can see here. So now to join my front piece to my sides. So on one side I'm going to stitch from the edge to the notch, I'm going to leave a little gap and stitch again from the notch to the edge and on the other side stitching straight across. So that's my little gap on one side. And the other, as I said, straight across. So I've repeated that entire process twice. And now to join both of my pieces together around that outer edge. So lining up my notches and pinning. I'm going to leave myself a little gap at the top edge of one side so that I can pull everything through. Stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance, pivoting up my corners, coming up to my little gap, back stitching, moving my fabric along, back stitching again, and coming back down to my starting position. Finishing with a back stitch. So I just need to trim my corners, turn the whole thing right side out and press, which I've went ahead and done off camera. And now to finish my belt, I just need to run a hand stitch around the opening, joining the top and bottom fabric together, and close up that little gap at the top. And once it's all done, this is how it looks. This is a huge belt, but just like the sleeves, this is a main feature of this dress. So happy with that. So I mentioned earlier I had a little trick to add a little bit more puffiness to the sleeve. And that trick comes in the form of a sleeve head. So I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. The usual notches. adding here some quite stiff interfacing that's going to give it the structure I want. I seen this used in a dress in a shop and I thought it was quite interesting and wanted to give it a go on this dress. I finished the top and bottom edge on the overlocker and now I need to gather down that top edge. So again exactly the same as I did before, just finishing off my gathering stitches here. Once it's all been gathered down, this is how it looks. So to add it, I'm just lining up the edge of the sleeve head with the sleeve seam. My fabrics are wrong side together and pinning. And I'm going to hand stitch this into place. And I've specifically left this to the very end because I wanted to see just how puffy this fabric would look without a sleeve head. And it is quite puffy, but this is going to add just a little bit of extra puffiness. So that's that done. And with that, this little dress is complete. So I have that extra bit of puff with my sleeve head. I've got that gorgeous square neck, fully lined, my bias bound back neck, that huge belt, double ruffle sleeve with that really nice edging, my full length skirt, and that beautiful ruffled hem. 
this is what it looks like on. Those of you following along on Instagram will have seen the inspiration for this and I think I have got it pretty similar. Of course I changed up the neckline to this gorgeous square neck which I absolutely love but I've got the puff sleeve and I'm so glad I added the sleeve head giving that extra bit of oomph. Those ruffles at the bottom of the sleeve as well. This was the first time trying that overlay ruffle with that gorgeous edge. I will 100% be using that again. That huge belt, which is such a statement on this dress. Another thing I will definitely be using in the future. I love that it's maxi length with its full ruffle. I'm so happy I gave this dress a go. Love this one. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you find it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do, and I shall see you in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks!